Hello. I hate every single one of you. This is the pessimistic Red Panda, and I'm back with another story. Now, mind you, this story took place a, about 15 years ago, so I'm really showing my age. I call this story the King of Game story. So back in about 2003-2004, I was a sophomore or junior in high school, and as you probably figure it out I'm a, I was a fucking nerd I was a fucking outcast I remember playing children's card games Yu-Gi-Oh with my friends upstairs near the art room outside in the courtyard even in the fucking lunch room at Albany High rest in peace Albany High well we had some interesting people that played um we had some assholes some you know loud mouth know-it-all niggas and you know shit um there was one particular motherfucker that nobody could stand i'm not gonna mention his name for privacy issues uh, you'll find out why later in the video for now let's call this motherfucker uh, pharaoh now if you follow the Yu-Gi-Oh anime or manga whatever you know it's about some ancient egypt bullshit and five thousand years ago fucking talk about dual monsters and there was something between uh, Yami or the Yugi guy and fucking Seto Kaiba. But we all know it fucking centered around this nigga named the Pharaoh. And his favorite fucking car was the Dark Magician. So we called this nigga Pharaoh because he used the Dark Magician. You know, he's a real dickbag though. Real douche. I'll describe him real quick. He was stocky. He had a nasally lisp or whatever. It sounded like you could barely understand what the fuck he was saying. It was like... It was like he was the godfather or something of Yu-Gi-Oh, which I don't understand why I didn't call him the godfather, but I had another na name for him. I called him Mussolini because I thought the motherfucker was Italian. But, nah, he was American. He was just a sort of weird. He looked like one of those emo hipster fuckboys, you know, that would listen to Evanescence or fucking Creed or Linkin Park and fucking slit his wrist to, like, bring me to life for one last breath. <laughs> He was also very arrogant, and I understand why he was. He, he was one of the better card players at, at Albany High. He also did some weird shit. One thing that was, that was weird and pissed me off is fucking, he'd carry his cards in the fucking, now this is very petty, but usually, you know, if you have um, cards or whatever, you like to keep them nice and clean and shit, so you put the motherfuckers in like some deck sleeves. This motherfucker put his damn cards in one of those goddamn top top loaders that you know you put baseball cards or some shit in. He put each individual card in one of those motherfuckers. So his deck would be like maybe like five or six inches tall off the fucking off the fucking play mat or ground or whatever. And it was really hard to shuffle the motherfucker's deck, you know. Um his fucking Cars are sliding all over the place whenever we played and shit. So I figured this nigga was stacking every time we played because he'd get out Dark Magician every motherfucking time. He also kept his deck in a fucking one of those old school. I'm talking about like Wave 1 fucking Dark Magician fucking 10. You, usually you'd carry a, a fucking deck box, you know, keep it on your person at all times or or at least put it in your locker. This motherfucker just carried, carried it everywhere with him. Getting back to Dark Magician, I still don't understand how that motherfucker will pull that motherfucker out. Every motherfucking dude. That nigga was two motherfucking tributes. Get away two damn turns, nigga. And this is before all this damn exceed and fucking synchro shit and dandy hero or fucking, uh, what's the new one? Shit, Link, Link shit or whatever the fuck. This is what, okay, enough of this nerdy shit. Enough, enough, enough of the nerdy shit. A couple of my friends befriended the Pharaoh. One of them he called his humble servant, and I really can't remember what he called the other guy, but I'm going to say for now he was his bodyguard, like his Odeon or whatever. We only had a few Yu-Gi-Oh players at that time, so I don't really understand why he needed a fucking servant and he needed a goddamn security detail with him. I mean, unless, you know, you're protecting him from fucking jocks or some shit, but what made it so strange, though, is these friends I had, they thought the same way that I thought about this motherfucker. 
the Pharaoh was just an arrogant asshole. He just needed to be put in his place. I remember on a couple occasions, he did some really fucked up ass shit. Like, I remember one time he, he like clicked his tongue like, you know, he was calling a dog at his humble servant. You know, he would insult other people and talk about how poor some some people are, how, how much they suck and how much their deck sucks and all this other crazy shit. So, I had a feeling that one day, something was going to happen to this motherfucker. Let's say, let's say this is the next day, because my memory is sort of foggy, because this happened 15 years ago. So, let's say the next day, his so-called bodyguard broke into his locker, took his cards, and ran the fuck off. He showed up to my first fucking period class, with the Pharaoh's deck 10 in hand, and he yelled out, Operation Make Pharaoh Cry Success! This stupid fucking idiot. After Pharaoh found out his cards were stolen or whatever, the police got involved. No arrests were made. A couple weeks later, Pharaoh had transferred to a school across town. And that was the end of the story. Well, that's it. You can fuck until that summer. That summer, I only had three things in my mind. Getting a job, playing video games, and Yu-Gi-Oh. The search for a job really sucked ass. Um, I have a quick story about that, too. So, there was this fuck nigga in my neighborhood, and my dad talked to him, see if he can get a job for me and my sister. So, he promised me and my sister we, would, we could get on at Taco Bell where he worked. TLDL. After the interview, he reneged on his promise. So, later that summer... This fuck ass nigga rolled by in his black, look like a 97 Lincoln Continental Coupe. You can just see the coonery coming around the corner. Not like the 1970s one, no, but it was a fuck nigga car, okay? I was walking with a group of friends and we reached this corner. This motherfucker was so big and bad, he just, he'd even, he'd even stop at the stop sign. He just kept going. He crossed in front of us. One of my friends pretended like he got hit. He just fucking yelled like he, like he was in pain and shit. So this nigga hit the brake so motherfucking hard, the car went up on like a 35 degree angle. I thought that motherfucking car was going to flip off. And dude stuck his head out all nervous and shit. Like, hey, you okay? My friend replied, I'm okay. Maybe next time your bitch ass will stop at a stop sign. The bitch nigga yelled out and anger, shot a bird, in which we, you know, we were blast and shot one right back at his ass. Last thing I heard, he was doing jail time for child molestation. But that was 15 years ago. He probably got out. Whatever. Anyway, back to this lame ass story. Video game wise, I was playing PlayStation 1 games. Knows the year is 2003. PS2 is already out. And I'm still playing PlayStation 1. So I was probably hitting up Gran Turismo 2. Maybe some JRPG. I think at that time I was playing either Final Fantasy 9. Or was it my second playthrough on Final Fantasy IX? Or was it my third playthrough on Final Fantasy VIII? Because somebody had the great idea of overriding my save. Yu-Gi-Oh! Wise Man, though, Nick was coming up. Shit. <laughs> I had one of the best beatdown decks of that shop. I had 1800, 1900 attack monsters. United We Stand, Mage Power, Penguin Soldier, Tyrannal Tribute, Dark Hole. Regeki, Harpy, stuff. Man, I had all that motherfucking shit. Heavy Storm, Premature Burial, all that shit. All that shit. Hollow. Pretty as fuck. The Pharaoh's Bodyguard had gave me a Yalagarasu. First edition. Love that fucking card. I got all this shit before this motherfucking bitch ass ban list would like fucking pretty much destroy my damn deck. This deck will come into play later. So out of the blue, Pharaoh had found out where I stayed. He came over... Me and my friend, at the, me and my best friend at the time, we went over to his house, played some Yu-Gi-Oh, just chill for a second. So he started coming over every day. And when I mean every day, I mean every day he would come over. It was like his deck was never taken. I mean, he had new cards too. He had, he had an, another Dark Magician deck just that fast. He had another one. Everything was good. So remember that interview I, I talked about earlier when I had to go to Taco Bell and... With my sister and all that other shit. So one day that happened. So I had to go to the interview. He had came over. I said I'll be right back. 
Interview was like 30 minutes. We came right on back. He was gone. So I was thinking like, well, I guess he had to go. I started looking for my deck so I can make some changes to it for the, you know, weekend coming up. I just want to look at it, change some cards out, adjust a new strategy, all this other shit. I couldn't find it. I started backtracking in my mind, like, did I leave it over my homeboy's house? Let me go over there. Nothing. So I spent a visit from the Pharaoh the next day. He didn't show up. And the next day produced the same thing. So I, I put two and two together and realized this motherfucking nigga stole my motherfucking deck. God damn, I'm so fucking stupid. I should have paid attention to all of the signs. First, he just randomly shows up at my house and starts coming over every day. And it was all a ploy to steal my motherfucking shit. So I told my homeboy, and he was fucking pissed. He said, we gonna get that motherfucker. Well, that never happened. Saturday was a couple days later. And I had no motivation to go to the car shop. Because I had no motherfucking deck to play with. All the time, the effort... And trading, I went through to get that deck the way it was. It's all fucking gone. It's like I put all my eggs in one motherfucking basket. And I dropped that bitch. I really felt like staying at home. I got my shit stolen because my so-called friend decided it was a great idea to steal this nigga's deck. And then I got my shit stolen in retaliation. That's some real fuck shit, man. But I had no motivation to go to the card shop. I just felt like staying at home. And that's when I heard an urgent knock on my door. It was my homeboy. My homeboy from before. And he said Pharaoh's dad had pulled a gun out on him. He tells a story like this. He was at a house nearby chilling with a girlfriend. And he spotted Pharaoh on the porch. So he approached him and asked about, and asked about my cards. And that's when Pharaoh's dad pulled a gun out on him. So I explained the situation to my dad. And he said, fuck no, boy. You ain't. No, no. Mm -mm. You trespassing. You can't be trespassing on that man's property. However, he did. He did agree to take us to Pharaoh's house so we can talk to him about the cards. At this point, my mind's a wreck. I have no I, I don't even remember how to get there. So my homeboy pointed away to Pharaoh's place. And by the time we got there, Pharaoh was gone. His mom was there watching the family car. And my homeboy asked where the fair was at. She said he was at the card shop. Then I then I asked, where are my cards? She replied, you shouldn't have taken his cards. I said, I ain't had nothing to do with that shit. I did not take his cards. Someone else took his cards. She speculated like I had something to do with the shit. I had nothing to do with that motherfucker shit. But at that point, it was too damn late. By the time I got to the card shop of Books Million, that, my cards gone. They've been traded away. They've been sold. Shit given away. Shit, and if he didn't give them away at the card shop or whatever, or books a million, he could have went to the public library and got rid of them shits. I fucking left. I took a sabbatical from Yu-Gi-Oh for about maybe two or three months. I was depressed. Something I worked so hard for, it's gone. Eventually, I did come back. I came back stronger than ever. That wasn't the last I heard from the Pharaoh either. I saw him about a year or two later at the card shop. I had way more cards by that time. More cars than I can ever hope for. I know he saw me, but he didn't He didn't want to say anything to me. After a couple weekends, after the first time I saw him in the car shop, I said, fuck it. I said, what you got for trade? So after the trade, I could sort of tell he was relieved. And that's when I heard those words. I'm sorry. That was the first and only time I ever heard that motherfucker apologize. He started off again. I, I just interjected and said, I know. I got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Let's just let it go. Because at that point, I, I didn't want anybody's shit to get taken. I didn't want any altercation. I mean, it was in the past. I have way more shit now than I did then. And I was so focused on that one damn deck. And that deck at that point in time was sort of irrelevant. Like, there's no point of me losing my life or hitting somebody over some motherfucking children's car games. Ain't <laughs> motherfucking cardboard. Why the fuck would I fight over some motherfucking cardboard? Ain't no fucking point. He continues, uh, 
I thought you were going to beat the shit out of me. And I replied, where the fuck would that get me? Let's just get let everything go and play some cards. And that was the last time I saw the Pharaoh. Alive. He went to the card shop a few more times after that. And then he just stopped showing up. He got a job at KFC and everything was looking up for him. He wanted to become a police officer. He had a lot of aspirations and unfortunately one night he got into an altercation with these two guys. I knew Pharaoh had a very smart mouth. I guess during the altercation or after the altercation, one guy had hit him over the head and killed him via blunt force trauma while the other helped him dispose of the body in the local river. His killers were brought to justice, but Pharaoh didn't even live to be 20. As much as an arrogant asshole as he was, he didn't deserve that shit. He didn't deserve that fucking fate. I live my life as a pessimist, but shit, I'm thankful to be alive, I guess. My life sucks, but fuck, at least I'm breathing. Pharaoh really didn't get a chance to experience life outside of his teenage years, man. Thanks to a couple fuck niggas. I remember seeing that shit on Facebook 11 years ago. He's been gone for 11 years. Damn. Well, that's it. You can fuck off now. Maybe 16 is for-